In today's world, there is a growing fascination with the power of the placebo effect. The concept that you can give someone a simple sugar pill or saline injection and they will begin to feel the effects of the actual substance or treatment is nothing short of fascinating. The reason for this is that the human mind has a remarkable ability to program the autonomic nervous system to produce the exact pharmacy of chemicals needed to match the substance they believe they are taking. Recent research in the field of epigenetics has revealed that genes are like Christmas tree lights, constantly turning on and off in response to the environment. The expression of proteins is responsible for the structure and function of the body and the expression of life itself. However, if one interprets their environment in the same way every day, thinking the same thoughts, exhibiting the same behaviors, and experiencing the same emotions, then the same genes will remain activated while others are suppressed. Additionally, the hormones of stress can further downregulate genes, leading to the development of diseases. If the environment is what signals the gene and emotions are the end product of an experience, then living in the same emotional state every day will signal the same genetic expression, leading to a predetermined genetic destiny. However, one can signal the gene ahead of the environment. By embracing elevated emotions, combining them with clear intentions, and being fully present in the moment, the brain and body do not differentiate between external and internal experiences. The body then sends the signal to produce the chemical or hormone that it believes is needed to match the emotional experience. The stronger the emotion felt from an inward process, the more attention is paid to the thought or image in the mind, creating a long-term memory. This memory down-regulates genes for disease and up-regulates genes for health, allowing the production of new proteins, hormones, and chemicals to affect other systems in the body. While this process can take time, the evidence shows that acute conditions can be effectively treated with modern medicine, while chronic conditions require lifestyle changes. To begin making these lifestyle changes, one must examine the way they live their life, the choices they make, and how they manage their emotions. While not everyone may be open to this process, health and wellness can be as infectious as disease. Once people start to break through and embrace this way of thinking, the effects can spread, leading to a more significant change in the community. In my 8,500 brain scans, I've discovered that we are at our best when we move beyond ourselves. This is where the real work lies. Physicians have seen firsthand the impact of people managing their emotions, thoughts, and making better choices. They're making great strides and not falling into self-destructive patterns. Many physicians have become my colleagues and commend me for the work I'm doing, stating that it makes their job easier. Sometimes medication doesn't necessarily heal the disease, but it helps people maintain a certain quality of life or health. However, the nervous system has the potential to become the greatest pharmacist in the world. How? By changing our thinking and feeling. Our thoughts and emotions can make our own pharmacy of chemicals that are equal to any drug we take. I became fascinated with the placebo effect, which led me to write my book, The Placebo. It's incredible to see how people can take a sugar pill, saline injection, or even a false surgery or treatment, and still believe that they are getting the actual substance or treatment. A certain percentage of people can program their autonomic nervous system to make the exact pharmacy of chemicals equal to the substance that they think they're taking. This begs the question, is it the inert placebo that's doing the healing, or is it the body's innate capacity to heal by thought alone? That pill is merely a symbol of possibility. It's a representation of hope. The doctor says, this is a great new drug that's going to help with depression and the person begins to think about the idea that they could get better. They're selecting a new potential in the quantum field, and then all of a sudden, a certain percentage of those people become enthusiastic and inspired. They start changing their emotional state, combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion, and changing their state of being. When we believe we're worthy of receiving, that's when the universe will deliver. When we're in survival mode, separation and lack, we're forcing and controlling outcomes and we're matter trying to change matter. It's going to take time for anything to happen because we're creating a three-dimensional reality and everything in a three-dimensional reality takes time. However, when we create from the heart, 
the coherent brain and a coherent heart and have that 5G Wi-Fi signal, experiences come to us. We draw events to us. So we spend a lot of time bonding with our future emotionally. Colleagues of mine have studied oxytocin levels, which increase when we're in a relationship, during the honeymoon stage, or when a female mammal bonds with her offspring. We can make our own pharmacy of chemicals just by changing our thoughts and emotions. The placebo effect proves that our body's innate capacity to heal is vast, and it's all about our state of being. When we're in the right state, the universe delivers. It's not about matter trying to change matter, but rather about creating from the heart and the coherent brain. It's about believing that we're worthy of receiving and bonding with our future emotionally. The power of the mind is limitless, and we have the ability to heal ourselves in ways that we never thought possible. We often get caught up in the day-to-day -day grind and forget about what truly matters to us. That's why it's essential to bond with your future and fall in love with it just like you would with someone else. When you're emotionally attached to your future, no person, circumstance, or thing can remove you from it. So what does it mean to bond with your future? It means to have a deep emotional connection to the life you want to create for yourself. It's about having a vision of your future that inspires and motivates you to take action. When you're bonded to your future, you're more resilient and you're better equipped to deal with challenges and setbacks that may come your way. If you fall from grace during the day, the next question you should ask yourself is what caused you to disconnect from your love for the future? Then you can rehearse in your mind how you will overcome that same circumstance in the future. By doing so, you become worthy of love. It's no longer about blaming the person or the event. It's about doing what it takes to stay in the emotion of your future. Your body is aligned emotionally to that future, so it's essential to do things that help you maintain that emotional alignment. Meditation is a great way to achieve emotional alignment, but the real challenge is staying in that emotional state even when you're not meditating. That's where the real work begins. You need to open your eyes and be present in the initiation of life. Stay in that place and know that your future is going to happen. To achieve this, you need to activate your heart and breathe deeply so your body feels safe enough to create. Once you do this, you'll start getting some really good ideas. You'll see things you never thought you'd see, and you'll feel things you never thought you'd feel. The images and thoughts you create in your mind are powerful. They produce chemicals in your body that make you feel a certain way. By focusing on positive thoughts and images of your future, you're producing chemicals that make you feel good. You're giving your body a taste of the future before it happens, and this helps you feel more familiar with that future. A researcher from Yale University in the 1940s studied the electromagnetic fields around living organisms. He found that 100% of the time, the positive charge was always at the head, and the negative charge was always at the tail. Human beings are no different. Every thought we have produces a frequency that creates a chemical in our body. If we obsess over lack, we're producing chemicals that make us feel negative emotions. The cycle of thinking and feeling over time creates a subconscious state of being. Mental rehearsal is a tool that can be used to shape our beliefs and create new patterns of thought, behavior, and emotion. Mental rehearsal is the process of imagining and practicing a desired outcome in your mind. There are two types of mental rehearsal, internal mental imaging and external mental imaging. Internal mental imaging involves experiencing the scenario as if you are in it, while external mental imaging involves observing yourself in the scenario. Research shows that when we engage in mental rehearsal, particularly in the first person, it produces a strong biological change. In fact, a study conducted on people who had never played the piano before found that after five days of mental rehearsal, they grew the same amount of circuits in their brain as those who physically practiced playing the piano for two hours a day for five days. The process of mental rehearsal is simple but requires focus and repetition. The first step is to create a clear and detailed mental image of the desired outcome. The more vivid the image, the more effective the rehearsal. The next step is to mentally rehearse the scenario repeatedly, focusing on each aspect of the experience and paying attention to the emotions, thoughts, and behaviors that arise. As we engage in mental rehearsal, our brain does not distinguish between what is happening in the physical world and what is happening in our mind. 
The brain responds to our thoughts and feelings as if they are real experiences, and over time, mental rehearsal can create new patterns of thought, behavior, and emotion that shape our reality. Our brains are remarkable organs, responsible for the sum total of our experiences and knowledge up to this moment. From a biological standpoint, they are a record of our past, storing all of our memories and experiences and shaping our thoughts and actions in the present. However, recent research has shown that the brain is also capable of changing its circuitry before an experience, priming itself to create new neural pathways and to reshape itself in response to new stimuli. In other words, the brain can be a map to the future, not just a record of the past. This phenomenon is known as mental rehearsal, and it has been shown to have a profound impact on our ability to learn and perform new skills. For example, if you take a group of people who have never played the piano before, but who have spent the last few days mentally rehearsing playing scales and chords, they will be able to play them with surprising accuracy when they are actually sat in front of a piano. The same is true for physical exercise. If a group of men spend an hour a day mentally rehearsing doing bicep curls, adding an emotional component to the mental image, they can increase their muscle strength by 13.5% in just two weeks without ever actually performing the activity. The reason for this is that mental rehearsal changes the brain to look like the experience has already occurred. The brain creates new neural pathways and rewires itself to make the imagined experience seem as real as possible. And when the brain changes, the body follows suit. In the case of the men doing bicep curls, the body looks like it has been working out for two weeks, even though it hasn't actually lifted a weight. This is the power of mental rehearsal and visualization. By imaging what we want to achieve, we can prime our brain and body to look like the future has already occurred. And when we push beyond the limits of what we think is possible, we step into the unknown and create new possibilities for ourselves. However, the challenge with this approach is that most people are not aware of the extent to which their behavior, beliefs, and attitudes are ingrained in their subconscious mind. Research suggests that by the time we reach 35 years old, 95% of who we are is a set of memorized behaviors, emotional reactions, beliefs, perceptions, attitudes, and habits that function like a subconscious computer program. This means that most of the time, we are acting unconsciously, without awareness of why we are doing what we are doing. To make a change, we have to cross a river from the old self to the new self. The body has become the mind, and it clings to its familiar patterns and habits. When we step into the river of change, the body sends signals back to the brain, signaling discomfort and resistance to the unfamiliar. This can make change feel difficult and uncomfortable, but it is also an opportunity to create new possibilities for ourselves. The key is to be aware of our habits and behaviors and to consciously choose to create new patterns and habits that align with our goals and values. This requires conscious effort and a willingness to step out of our comfort zones, but the rewards can be immense.